Just a quick comment on drawing microstructures. First thing, grains are not circular. Grains have got five sides, approximately. Draw them as such. And equiaxed structures, equiaxed, equal axes. An equiaxed structure has, is equal in all sizes. So it's basically, I was going to say spherical, but it's kind of a, um, equivalent sized in all descriptions. It can't be spherical because grains have got sides. non equiaxed means the grains are longer in one direction than they are in the other two. So let's have a look at a few examples. We'll talk steels at the moment. If you're doing an annealed aluminium, then obviously there's only one phase, so you don't need to bother about perlite. So, austenite. High temperature, one, two, three, austenite is large grains. Martensite, we talk about a particular word called an acicular structure. Acicular is Greek or Latin, I don't know, it means needle shaped. A secular martensite is needles, random needles. The structure of a martensite, when it goes from being a cubic structure to being extended, it basically grows along planes. And it grows into... Martensite looks like needles under the microscope. Just get a stack of needles, drop them on a plate and draw that. That's what it looks like. Hyper. A hyperutectoid steel. Here's our own carbon diagram. There's the eutectoid point. It's just there, it's 0.8%. Hyper rhymes with super, means above. A hyperutectoid steel is greater than 0.8% carbon. So a 0.9% carbon, a 1% carbon steel that's um, cooled slowly has a particular structure. As it cools, let's have a look at this chart again. As it cools, austenite, austenite plus cementite, As it cools, the first thing that forms is iron carbide. So we get a continuous network of carbides forming at the boundaries. High carbon steels are brittle. That's iron carbide. So we get Iron carbide is a continuous network. That's brittle. That's hard. Hyperutectoid steels, if they're not cooled in the correct manner, look like this and they are brittle and hard. Inside, when it gets to 723 degrees, every one of those grains is perlite. Well, that's what a hyperutectoid steel looks like. Hyperutectoid steel. If you're asked to draw martensite, it looks like that. Tempered martensite looks like. Just draw a fine grey underneath. If you want pencil and then smudge it, and just put in a line there, tempered martensite. Too fine to see anything under the microscope. And annealed steel, large grains. A normalised mild steel, small grains. But uh, maybe even smaller than that, looking at that difference annealed versus normalised, you might even draw them smaller. But I don't have time to um, sit there for hours and draw them in. Of course, in steel,
there is some pearl line. So, austenite, large, uniform, equiaxed grains. Annealed, larger, uniform, equiaxed grains. Normalised is a steel only term. Normalising produces small equiax grains. Hyperutectoid steel, you've got a network of carbide in there because it's cooled down and there's our eutectoid content, 0.8%, so anything above, hyper, super. Anything below, low, anything below 0.8% carbon is a hypoutectoid. We're going to deal with that separately. If you quench austenite and it's got sufficient carbon so it can't transform, you get martensite, which is an acicular stru structure. When you temper it, you get tempered martensite. Now metallurgy way back in the 1800s when they discovered all this was full of people that named stuff after themselves. Austenite, Mr. Austin found that. That's named after Mr. Martins, Conrad Martins. Tempered martensite, sometimes you'll see in a book, trustite or sorbite. Don't use those terms. But Mr. Trust and Mr. Sorby found those and they named them after themselves as well. It's called tempered martensite. If you see those terms, that's what it means, but don't use them.